Hey everyone, very excited about today's video. We are going to be having a iron striking masterclass and I'm joined by two absolute legends. Me and my golf, Andy and Piers. Boys, how are we doing? Good to, you, the, uh, to the Good to see you, Pete. The official YouTube handshake. Yes, like yes. we've not met yet today. Correct. And it's all fresh in here. <laughs> um, to put this in kind of context, so this is going to be a lesson for me in my swing. I'm starting to play again this year, and I really want to nail down some changes within my own technique with the irons. But also, the guys are going to be talking to you about how you can implement certain changes within your swings and some drills to really help you absolutely pure your irons, no pressure. Absolutely. So do me a favour, just take your setup and then we're actually going to get you just to swing to the top of your back swing and hold. And we'll, we'll show a slow-mo of this as well, we've taken some of those already. But ultimately what, what we see is, you're good, you're good, you're good. What we see is from here is that Pete's hands and arms often get out in front of him. That's quite a nice trait, especially if you want to play a fade. If you're a Brooks Kepka, mm -hmm. this is a really nice trait. And you kind of got a Brooks Kepka look about you. Um, on the way down... I think that's a compliment. In what way? I've got a face. I've got, I've got yeah, eyes yeah, yeah. and ears. No, your, your backswing, sir. But then from there, as we do swing down, as you're aware, there is a steepening of the yeah. shaft, maybe Oops. more than we would like. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that shaft does get a little bit steep. Now, the problem with this is, when we then go into impact, if I just throw the club down here, you're already aware of this as well, yeah. that the club shaft gets quite upright. Yeah. The problem is when we have an upright shaft, when we are about to strike the golf ball, there's a lot more chance we can influence our face to pass. Mm -hmm. So basically, the club face is more at liberty to be out of whack compared okay. to the rest of the swing. So you can hit it left, you can hit it right. Technical term of the year, that by the way. Out of whack. Out of whack. So the key for me today will be, how can we figure out how we could potentially shallow it a little bit, mm -hmm. As a result of that, you're going to play maybe more draw. Yeah. And the future part is how do we get rid of, how do we make sure the draw doesn't become a hook? Yeah. Because okay. you've already got a bit of draw yeah, in you sense. already. Yeah, yeah. We're probably going to give you a little bit more um, short term. And then the future part of that will be just making sure it's not too much. Yeah. No, that's cool. So just set up again because there's one other thing that I want to sort of look at as well. And we'll show this again on video. You guys have got the slow mos. Yeah. If we look at this front on camera here, we can see that if anything, Pete for me is, is kind of set up a little bit more upper body for a driver. So you actually a little bit, quite a bit of tilt this way mm -hmm. for an iron, probably a little bit too much. And if, if we think about it, if we think about a steep club shaft and we think about our shoulders being over here, what could that create? It could create ground first contacts. Yeah. So I'd wanna, I'd wanna maybe have a little play with getting you what feels level, but it won't be, but a little bit more like neutralized. Okay. And that, this is the next part that we have to ask someone on a golf lesson. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to do anything before that you've either found very difficult or you've gone, forget that, I do not want to do that, and it made me worse? Um, I mean, we, we could go back to the kind of shallowing thing yeah, that we just yeah. spoke about, really. Because obviously, you know, I, I, I've seen this as a bit of an issue. Yeah. My biggest problem whenever ever I've tried to shallow the club, I can manipulate a shallow. I yeah. can get that club kind of dropping a little bit more inside when I want to. Yes. But all that really leads me to do is kind of come inside and flip. have to flip yeah, quite a yeah. long way. Um, so it's always been a case of kind of marrying that up with any kind of correct body movements to make yes. sure that I'm not having to <coughs> manipulate quite so much okay. with my hands. Okay. Can I ask a quick question as well? You said you've gone from fades. Yeah. You know, you were more fade maybe last year. Yeah. But now you're a little bit more close to way, maybe more, more neutral more or neutral, draw. Yeah, what yeah. have you done in order to get there? Honestly, it was literally to try to go from like my fade, I was getting quite steep a long way left. Basically just trying to feel I'm a lot more rounded, a lot more kind of shallow in backswing and through swing. And then as I've been bringing it through, it's just been neutralizing everything. Yeah. But it is very much, and this is something that a lot of people will notice when they have lessons. Me feeling like I'm swinging it around my body, it, it doesn't look. It's still, like, it's still, it's out still, in front. Yeah, it's yeah. still out of front. And you can see that because definitely I've seen videos of you where the club has been so set up for me. Yeah. I've seen videos of you and play golf with you and the club is very much been there mm -hmm. on the move away. Yeah, Today yeah. we can see that you're a lot nearer playing. If anything, yeah. you smack on playing. 100%. But it's just this top part for me that gets quite steep mm -hmm. and in front. And that's okay if you want to play fade. Yeah. But if you want to go away from that and you want to get the strike a little better. For, for me, playing a fade, if I want to play a fade, I can play a fade. Yes. Like yes. it's not. I'm not worried about that really yeah. in any way. Like if I need to play that shot, yeah. I've been hitting that shot all my life. You know, it, yeah. I can do that. It's more how I can get myself in a position where if I want to hit more neutral shots, I, that's more of my natural motion. Yes. And then I can adapt to a fade or I can adapt to a draw. Okay. Certainly last year there was times when if you asked me to hit a draw, okay. like it would, nah, just no. Chance. No, no chance, no chance. Well, the, the good thing with this is as well, you're having to be quite 
intentional about shallowing things and swinging around. Now we know it will happen eventually. If you ever do get to that point in six months time mm -hmm. where you are very much thinking about swinging around, you're gonna get too much shape. Yeah, yeah. The, ball, the golf ball will tell you. The key is with this, if we can get you doing this without having to think about shallowing it, then that would be, that would be yeah, ideal. Okay. And this is why it's gonna be so powerful for you guys mm. because the exact same thing that Piers is gonna get Pete to do is really going to help you get the club being delivered from a slightly shallower position as well. I need to go through this first. So take your setup for me. Mm -hmm. Swing to the top of your backswing. Now we've already looked, we've used the Sports Box app to find out that Pete has 30 degree of hip rotation at the top of his backswing. Relax there, you can come down. So when you've got someone who's got a, what I think we would say on the shorter spectrum mm -hmm. of hip turn on the yep. way back, it's very easy then to have those hands and arms out, unless you are Rory McIlroy. Rory McIlroy has 30 degree hip turn, but his hands and arms get more yeah, yeah. behind him. Again, we, we, we mentioned your mate Brooks, that he has about a 30 degree hip turn, mm. and that's what gets those hands and arms out in front. And then as soon as he applies the power, then he's coming down a little bit steeper and playing fade. So if you set up for me. Okay. So my plan would be with this, and I'll do, we will do the screen in a moment, is if we swing back, you do a really good job of turning your hips here, mm -hmm. but then they kind of stop about here. Yeah and then the arms carry on and then the hips get going quickly. So the key would be, could we get nearer 40 degrees of hip rotation? And now we've got his hands more around his head. So it's a little bit deeper and you haven't had to think about that. Mm. The only thought will come from here. Okay. And then the key from here would be, once you're here and you apply the power from the ground up, as we know we should, so you do that for me, apply the power from the ground up, the club will naturally be on a shallower angle. The left bicep will be on his left pec and then the club as it comes through here now will be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. It won't be so up when we're okay. so upright. Make sense? Yeah. Makes sense, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me get my six iron back. So the, the shallowing mechanism here is from how the body's moving and most golfers when they're trying to shallow the golf club, as Pete said earlier, he can shallow it and manipulate it. And this is what a lot of people are trying to do. They're trying to do it with their wrists, their arms, but sometimes the answer lies in, in how we move the, the body. If yeah. you're swinging over the top right now, there's two things you need to check. The club face isn't open and that you aren't, that you, and you've got a poor hip pivot in your backswing. Oh yeah, yeah. They're the, they're the main two for us, they really are. So I say, this is the king or the real driver, this is kind of the queen, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's something that I definitely kind of see, certainly when I was coaching more often, that ability of kind of amateur golfers to actually allow hip rotation in the backswing. Because everyone knows you've got to turn your hips through, but mm. a lot of people still, maybe under the illusion kind of from the tiger era that keeping your hips yes. as static as possible on the backswing is something which is desirable when in fact it's really not the case it's not desirable it's, it's, it's if you tiger woods yeah. <laughs> and you do it for a living so what we're going to do the way we do this test is a hip rotation test we just want to make sure hip uh pete's right hip can move and function properly we're testing his, his, his hip age here aren't we yeah, exactly sometimes it works but i mean for pete obviously if he wants to make oh, i'll talk comes that in a moment actually <laughs> so we've got a lima stick here at zero degrees effectively we've got the six sign laying flush to it so from here we're going to go up on the right toe left toe goes like so stand up tall hands and arms hands on your hips sorry not arms on your hips <laughs> hands on your hips and then just rotate into your back swing now okay if Pete keeps his wallet in his back right pocket, he'll have no problem passing this test because yeah. obviously the mass and Dead the weight of that, that, square, that yeah. wallet will help him open out more. But he hasn't, so he's gonna, we're going to see what he's got. Left foot like this. Yeah, left foot like on his toe. Yeah, just support there you go. Beautiful. All right. So you just gonna... rotate for me. Go as far. That's it. It's pretty good. And again, again, just be mindful of that right foot that is staying flat on the ground and it's not curling up at all. And again, just like that, Andy. So, and again, one more time. Go as much as you can to get your hands out of the way for me. If I go that across there, that's probably a good representative sample. Step away. So ideally, we'd want that to match up to that six iron on the ground. And right. we can see we're a bit short. Okay. So potentially, I mean, you may, you may have about 30 degree hip rotation there. Mm. So potentially, you could work at opening out the hip a little bit, getting a bit more flexible. Yep. You do a lot of traveling, it's a flipping nightmare. We know what that does to the body. But if you could work on your mobility, that would be helpful. If you do this test at home and you're really struggling with this, that a good way to help with mobility is to either flare the foot out or even draw it back a bit. Yeah, okay. And, and these, these two motions here are great. I don't think you'll necessarily need to do that. If you couldn't move then in that test, mm. then there's a problem. Yeah. But you moved enough for me to go, yeah, Pete can do this. Okay. And when you actually were swinging back and you turned more, you did it. Can do this. <laughs> can you do can do this. this. There's loads of drills we can do, but before we do any drills, just have some practice swings where you don't stop. Okay. So back and through, 
where you make sure that you rotate your hips more. Okay, good. I'm just going to jump here, see what we've got from the <clears throat> arms. He had a big sigh of, oh, oh geez. He felt that, I think. I think what's going to happen with this as well, we talk about it a lot, Pierce, in terms of synchronizing the backswing. When you look at Pete's, there's, as you mentioned, the sort of a, it sort of stops, the arms go, and then mm -hmm. there's an early fire. Yeah. This is now going to get everything more, more synced up, where things are almost stopping a little bit more together, yeah. as opposed to here, here. Mm. It's, going to, it's going to tie it all in together, really. Yeah. And it, look, it's a fade bias golf swing. This golf swing wants to fade. Yeah. You have probably made it, you've probably brought it back more to a neutral place. Yeah. What I want to do is I want to see if we can get you going almost the other side. Let's get you draw biased. So what will happen in a minute, if Pete gets this as we want, he'll be aiming at this center line here, this yellow line on the full swing. What's going to happen is once he starts turning more, he is naturally going to be able to start the ball further right than this. So his club path is probably going to go more out to the right and he might create a bit more shape. Right, okay. So naturally, by turning your hips, if you get it right, I'm expecting to see you... Yeah, we'll draw it a little bit more. We'll see the path go a little yeah. bit more to the right, definitely. And then what we'll do is we'll play the game of neutralizing that if we need to. So there's Great. two phases really isn't the pierce. Great game. Great game to play. Two phases. <laughs> Let's see so, you do it. So just like exaggerate it as much as possible. Yeah. Well yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you've got 30, th feel like giving me 45. Nice. Done here, I think. There we yeah, go. that'll do. <laughs> that it's, it's centre lined oh, it on yeah, the first shot. That's a draw. Take a look at the path number on this, though, in a second. And we'll just sort of get an idea of this. 7.3. 7.3. So 7.3 path. We will see that increase. You hit a few earlier, didn't you? Around about four, four mm. or five average. This will go up at the moment, which is okay, but there's going to be two, yeah. two parts to this. Oh, that's a bit more like it. It's fine. It's kind of like what I expected first time. <laughs> yeah, 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 the first one surprised us. <coughs> Again, we'll just do a back swing together. So you don't Pete, hit, don't Pete hit likes this move. This is, this is his favourite. It's uh, his favourite favourite coaching move. This is. <laughs> see, you're, see, Pete's good early. He can move early. So go. I'm not going to help him. But now I'm going to help him. Oh, that's right. Sorry, it's my visor. It's right. Jeez. You stop my eyes from getting out. You're right. That's different. That looks different. So do that again. I'm so I'm not going to do anything here. to start. But then I'm going to give you almost like a NOS boost at the end there <laughs> <laughs> to get that around there more. Okay. And, and look, the whole idea with this is it keeps the body flowing. It allows us to deliver the club on a shallower plane, not to try and not to guarantee that we get draw, just to guarantee that you can actually control the face to path easier. We know what it's like. Yeah. As soon as it's vertical like that, it's like it's twisting all over the place. Yeah. That feels, uh, that feels kind of extreme, which is... Almost what I want, really, because I yeah. need to need to know those differences. Of course. That was good. Really Beautiful. good. That's really good. Really and nice. And what I'll do, I'll show you guys a simple drill where you can do this yourself. Um, I, look, Pete, the one thing that Peter said to me before, that he wants to use his range practice to work at the swing and develop, but when he's on the golf course, he wants to keep it real simple. For you watching, it's the same. It really is. Keep it really simple on the range. Uh, sorry, keep it really simple on the golf course, and but again on the range, keep it simple as well. But just have a couple of things that you know work and create a difference, and then it'll help you just uh, fill in naturally on the course. Yeah, good, beautiful. So what I'm seeing now, this is like this is money already. So easy. So set up for me, Pete. No ball needed. Go to the top and stop. Just focus on the the hip turn being later in the backswing, and w straight away now we've got this here. His arms now are a lot more around him. So that's beautiful, that's really good. All that me, all, so this is great because you're gonna hit it pretty good now, but in three weeks or the future, oh, as we you, spoke earlier. Uh, dang, you, this is where you you, you're gonna- This is where you're gonna pay your first, he's gonna, he's gonna pay his okay. first invoice and then we'll be yeah, okay. Yeah. No, but what may happen is as a result of this, if you keep getting here and you're deeper with your arms, there's a potential that it might be everything we need but there is a potential that it might start shifting the path too far right yeah. and you get too drawy. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the feel that you need for that as well. Okay. One more exaggeration one? Yeah, let's go. Let's just keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. Really good. What have the strikes been like? Uh, Tommy Fleetwood. Um, yeah, that one, to be fair, that one actually felt, that was absolutely middle, by the way. Yeah. But the, 
Look at the path now. It's gone from four, five to ten. Yeah. What, what was quite strange on that one? That felt absolutely pure. It also <laughs> felt very. Um, there, there wasn't much kind of turf kind of interaction there. Okay. A bit more shallow kind of moving through there, which I am very much not against. Okay. Like okay. if you know, I can take if I can take divots. Yes. I can take some beauties. Yes. Like you think you've seen divots. You come play with me on a wet park on one day. I'm going to shock you, all right? So to actually get that feeling is actually, it's quite nice. Yeah, yeah, good. And, and that, that's the whole purpose of that. Exactly what you've mentioned there mm. is the whole purpose of why we're going down that route. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, just look at the screen here, actually, just quickly. Mm. Yellow line's the target line. We can see every single shot has started right, and they've all had a drift. We've had one that's overdone it. Oh, that was not so good. <laughs> Didn't go very far. Very, that was very neutral. <laughs> that was the right hand. Let, um, me do, let me just do a video down the line. Beautiful, so good. Do me another one. I'll do one in 120 as well, so it's a little bit. Uh, Getting close to that line, clearer. Pete. Yeah, honestly, it feels really strong. Like it feels odd. It feels like my arms are like almost in my back pocket, but actually, strike-wise, is is really nice. What was interesting on some of the shots that you hit earlier in our video that a lot of the balls were were finishing quite a long way. Over to that Same side, shape, yeah. but a long way left. Yeah. Yeah, really good. That was munch. That's on the line. Ooh. That was munch. Quick look at this. Just have a quick look at this, and you'll you'll, you'll have seen you swing enough to know. But if we look at that there, see where the hands are now. Oh, it just looks like what really. We'll try and like time this up on the video, but this is one of the most annoying things that you're ever going to find in the golf swing is that that feels so <laughs> different to what it looks like. Does it feel like they're in that bay? Well, so you're standing it, in this bay, but your hands are in, like in Arizona, mate, to be honest. <laughs> They're already making the trip. It's a, it's a much more repeatable action now. Yeah. The danger is it could start to go draw, as I say. So we'll definitely yeah, yeah. give you some feels on that. Okay. One, this is one thing I might recommend for you to do. If you wanted to have something to practice with, which is a little bit out there, get a really flat lying seven iron. Okay. It's a really flat line and, and, and try and hit it straight. So use the launch monitor to figure out, you can start it online and start it mm. straight. The only way you're going to do that is by getting the, ha the, sh the handle lower than... Very low. Does that make sense, yeah? Okay. So you could have a little play with that. So here's the one thing. We haven't done this just yet, but I'm going to see what happens when we do this. Okay. So set up for me. Just feel as though we're a little bit more... Actually, start again. Where's the weight on your feet? Which foot's got the most weight on it? Uh, or is it 50-50? It feels... Well, it felt 50-50, now I'm now you're making me think about no, it. I'm it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. we don't know because we haven't got anything on this, so we can't guess. But if we're more, if we're more like this, then there's more chance it's going to be slightly I mean, favouring. Yeah, this it, side. it feels potentially favouring on that right side. Okay. And okay. I, I think I've, I've been, I did a little bit of work with a new kind of launch monitor a few weeks ago, and that was showing it was a bit favoured on that okay. side. Okay. Okay. So. so let's put 55% of the weight, the pressure, on the lead leg. Lead leg. Let's go there. Okay. And let's just see what it does to the strike. And we'll just see whether this is a good thing, good thing or not. So what we're going to see when he leans more on his left leg is that his, his shoulders are going to be less away. We yeah. draw something in called the impact line. I don't know when you want to put this in your edit, but there's a line coming up from here, vertical line up. We call that the impact line. He's a long way from that normally with the setup, but now he's nearer to it. Okay. And then the same feeling on the way back is just to turn your hips. It's a little shorter on the hip turn on that one. Yeah, yeah okay. it, it, I, I, yeah, it, it didn't feel like I got that depth. Yeah, really didn't didn't quite way. get it on that Good. one. Yeah. Good. Good feedback, though. And it might be that this is where we just need to be. Where, where you are now, we don't have to change anything else. Because <laughs> why would we argue with the shots? We can go with, I can keep going with my ego and go, we must do what I thought we should do. Really and nice. We've only got to do what the ball should do. That was class. You can just see the difference. It Noise almost looks like you've got that extra little bit of time, Pete, yeah. before you go this way. It's almost like you're just completing that turn and then your sequence. Big, mm. Huge difference how you, it looks. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned before that you'd struggled a little bit with the right foot being a little bit more passive and rolling. Yeah. I think it's hard to do that, like Andy said, when you're already going real early with those. 100%, yeah. Well, yeah. here as well, it feels like I'm much more, like with this hip, I know it's, it's what we're doing, but it feels more kind of engage and set it feels like i can move a bit more this way yeah. rather than that way because it's already kind of sat yeah, back yeah, a little yeah. bit more 103 how high do you like hitting your irons do you have a preference what um, see again this is this is the difficult thing so obviously i've changed clubs i'm changing techniques so it's all in flux i like normally my ball fight is a squ it squeezes yeah the which is fine in certain conditions but generally yeah we know modern equipment we, we've got to be launching it kind of a lot higher mm. 
that type of ball fight there, that is something I'm never, I'm, I don't see that. Okay. That's not something I do on the course. Um, do, you, do you like that though? I mean, do I like hitting high, like, bo- high bottom it? draws? <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah, you know what, this is, this is going to shock everybody. Um, <laughs> you know what, I don't mind it. I, 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 but you don't mind that height? No, absolutely okay, not. That's no. Good, that's good. Um, because I know that I have spent the majority of my golf career, I could, I, if I need to hit it low, it's not like it's going to be a massive adjustment for me. Yeah. I know what I need to do yeah. because I've spent so long doing that. I can adapt. So you can always just put the ball back and just hit it a little bit, curtail the swing. Yeah. Do, do you know what? I'll just quickly jump in on this as well. And this is just a, such an important message for you guys: is that when when you're looking at your own golf swing, and, and we get into the weeds of, of trying to think about where we are and what we, you know, most golfers are thinking way too many complicated things. Yeah. Look how one simple one simple cue, which is turn your hips a little more in the backswing completely just changes everything. It doesn't need to be that hard. And I think for the, for the golfers watching this, look at your pivot motion. Mm. If there's one thing to check, club face is obviously key, how you pivot the body will really allow the arms to move in a really good way. You haven't got to think about flexing the wrist so much. Just, just see the importance of how your body moves and it can change so much. It's the key, isn't it, really? Like if, if you're given a lesson, if you can change one thing which then has a, a, a knock-on effect of multiple things falling into place, that's, that's the absolute dream, that's money, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's kind of what you really yeah. want to see as a coach. Absolutely. So, um, Can I explain that? Please do, yeah. I'll, I want to know. So if, I, if we think about if we jump over there a sec, I'll jump in and have a little demo. So what will happen for me when, when we see your swing, we see obviously early hip turn here, then it stops and then there's an upward motion here. So we've obviously very much in your Brooks Kepka mold. Yep. As that, what you do then is as you then turn on the power, because if we look at the, if we were to look at the sports box, we see that you get to this sort of 30 degrees, but you're very quickly going back towards the target. Yep. So you're almost starting, your hips are starting to rotate before you even finish your backswing. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Which a lot of good players do. So you rotate early, the shaft steepens out. Now what happens is, if you're not that good at golf and not that skilled at golf, you'll just continue throwing that club out and you'll have massive paths left and big high slices. Mm-hmm. But what you have to do from there is you go here and then you, you stall and then you stand the club up. So you're stalling your body and standing the club yep. up. So as soon as we now go to, go to this, deeper arms, and then you start putting the power on now, there's no reason to stand up. There's no reason to stall. There's no reason to get the shaft more vertical. It's just... Whoo, that's where those wrist. toe strikes will come from when and you get that too much in front. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's that toe strike. Oh, that's really hot. That you know what, do, you know the, do you know the key to this is? <laughs> look, I mean, look at these are just so nice. The key to this is go and do this for a little bit and then just come back and then we'll fix it if it's yeah, slightly exactly off. Right. It really is like come back and in that's a month. That's what we would do. That's what we would do. Back this this is just we're adding a layer to this which would generally mess up. Come back when it's sunny, Pete, because obviously uh, you picked a bad day. Qu- a little quick, a little quick. Then I think on the tr- in the transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. To, to be honest, it, the hardest quick. thing for me is almost having a. Obviously, I feel like I'm getting so much more rotation. I feel like my hands are behind me because it's such an unusual, an unusual position. I feel I'm kind of like trying to get it back as quickly as okay, possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't feel like I'm probably quite as deep as I need to be. Almost, I feel I need to slow down a touch in that point yeah. of swing. Do do that. Just feel, just feel as though you do it. Because the good thing about slowing down in your backswing or the end of your backswing, it guarantees the hips are going to turn a bit more. Yeah. I've got about five different things I could say to him right now, <laughs> but I, just, I don't want to do them now. Really nice. When you're yeah, hitting it that so good, good. And that, that golf swing there is so much more, why? So, it's so much more timed. What yeah. do people say? Why? I'm assuming in your comments that people love your golf swing, yeah? Yeah. Yes. We know this. Pe- pe- Why do they people, love it? What do they say? Nice. What do they say? Uh, nice tempo. Nice there you go. The best Don't mess it up. Yeah. And, and you're exactly right. So nice tempo. So from here, if he if he has a nice tempo, that means he's going to complete his turn, get a good hip turn, get good depth in his arms, and then he can rip it. I, I, obviously, this, I think this is a, a credit to kind of you guys and your coaching, but it's not very often where you're kind of going to leave a lesson and actually feeling like I'm striking it better. Okay. This is the key, and this is yeah. what I think a lot of us as coaches, we've been there. How often have you been told you've got to go to a golf lesson and get worse to get better? Yeah. I mean, what's the point of that? Let's go to the doctors and feel like crap coming out of there. Well, it depends on the news you get, but, mm. but ultimately, yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, when you go there to have something, work, have your golf swing worked at, you want to be better straight away. Yeah, yeah. You want to be better straight away. I did actually say there was a couple, there was a couple of things I wanted to do. I want to show them a drill yeah, that, absolutely. You, that they can do as 100%. well. Set up for me. 
and then I'm going to talk about consistency as, as, as my kind of finisher. So set, take your setup for me. And guys, if you are enjoying this video, by the way, please make sure you smash that subscribe button and that like button. Make sure you hop over to me and my golf as well and do the same kind of, there. Kind of matches your shorts as well, doesn't it? This? Well, that's like not by accident. Baby okay. blue, yes. Baby blue. So look, this is a great reference now for the amount of hip rotation Pete's going to get. So swing to the yeah. top of your back swing, give me a good hip turn. New hip turn. Yeah, new hip turn. New don't hip swing turn. through. No, don't, please don't swing through. And it's almost in your mind that you're trying to get the stick to the ball. You never will. But look at this turn now. Oh, relax, relax, relax. Oh, relax, relax. Jesus Christ. Nice. Very good. Nice. Again, great shape. Starting right. It's going to finish on the line. <laughs> it's going to do just it. Just going in. Oh. <laughs> and just one last thing. Mm. We mentioned, you mentioned earlier about consistency and wanting consistency. Consistency in golf is being able to control this. Yeah. You can control this, you're consistent. So you can have all kinds of funky looking swings, but if you know, if you know where to put this, then it's going to make it a lot easier. For you, Pete, mm. now, because you can rotate more, because you can go deeper arms, when you now apply the power with good rhythm and tempo that you get, you can have the club shallower, you can move the club through the plane better, it's not so high and up on its end, and then from there you can just continue to turn through. Love You're it. now managing the face better and getting it on plane. Love it. It's all really from, good. All from one simple it's change. It's crazy, isn't it? All from one yeah. thing that sets on a reaction to everything else. No, that's fantastic. That's how, I'm, 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 I'm honestly really excited about going hitting shots. Look at those. I know. I mean, I, when we stop recording, we need to hit a driver. Shall Unless just, you want to hit one now. Shall we do this as a... <laughs> Go on. Let's hit a driver. Okay, you know what? We're this, tempted this, now. Is, this is like golf lesson extra. So we've got an iron strike in masterclass. Bonus. A little bonus tee in of the wacky wacky. Yeah. So we're going to leave people with this shot. Is this a little kind of, little taster? This is the taster. It has to be okay. a good one though, Pete. We can't, we can't <laughs> leave it on a bad one. Same flight. Jesus. It's going to land on the line again. <laughs> 302 carry. Yeah. 123. 123. I think we've, <laughs> I think we've just solved golf. Got it, mate. Very good. He's cracked it. He's cracked it now. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm so happy. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.